A cold, eerie sound cuts through the static of the cosmos. It is a faint, rhythmic whistle, a ghostly pulse arriving from the darkness. It repeats. Every four seconds it whispers its lonely call across the vast emptiness of space. This is not a natural phenomenon, not the song of a distant star, not the hum of a nebula. It is the voice of a machine, a machine long thought dead. Its name is LES-1, the Lincoln Experimental Satellite 1. It is a relic of a bygone era. Launched on the 11th of February, 1965, LES-1 was a pioneer. It was a creation of the United States Air Force. It was built by the MIT Lincoln Laboratory. Its purpose was audacious for its time, to test the very limits of communication. The mission was to experiment with super high frequency radio signals, known as the X-Band, for military communications. The goal was to build a network in the sky, a system that would allow instant, reliable contact between ground stations and eventually between satellites themselves. It was a bold step towards the interconnected world we now take for granted, a dream of linking the globe through the cold vacuum of space. This small, ambitious satellite was designed to be one of a pair. Its twin, LES-2, would follow it into orbit later that same year. Together, these two machines were meant to perform a delicate dance, relaying signals from Earth and between each other across thousands of kilometers. The launch of LES-1 on February 11, 1965, was a moment of high tension and great expectation. Carried aloft by a Titan 3A rocket from Cape Canaveral, the satellite was on its way to the stars. The initial ascent was perfect a powerful and flawless climb through the dense layers of Earth's atmosphere. The rocket delivered its precious cargo into a preliminary parking orbit, exactly as planned. But the most critical moments of the mission were yet to come. To achieve its final operational orbit, a highly elliptical path that would allow it to linger over specific points on Earth, the satellite needed to fire its own small onboard rocket motor. This final push was everything. Tragically, this is where the mission unraveled. The command was sent to fire the solid propellant motor that would boost LES-1 into its intended orbit, but something went wrong. The motor failed to ignite. The satellite was stranded. An investigation later revealed the cause to be a simple yet devastating mistake. A miswired ordnance circuit, a tiny error in the complex web of electronics, prevented the electrical charge from reaching the motor's initiator. It was a heartbreaking failure, a single crossed wire that sealed the satellite's fate. Instead of soaring into its high-energy elliptical orbit, LES-1 was left tumbling in the low, circular path it was never meant to occupy. From that moment on, the mission was effectively over. Although the satellite was in space and its systems were initially active, it was in the wrong place. The low orbit meant it moved too quickly across the sky for sustained communication tests and its orientation could not be properly controlled. Engineers gathered limited data. By 1967, its signals faded and then ceased altogether. The batteries died, the electronics fell silent, and LES-1 officially joined the growing population of space junk. For 46 years, LES-1 was nothing more than a ghost in the celestial machine, a dead object silently orbiting the Earth. After its transmission ceased in 1967, it was relegated to the catalogs of space debris, one of thousands of defunct objects tracked by ground-based radar but otherwise ignored. It was a relic of a past age, a tiny piece of metal and silicon tumbling through the void at thousands of kilometers per hour. In the vastness of space, the satellite was remarkably preserved. Yet it was lifeless, its electronic soul extinguished, its purpose rendered moot by a single wiring flaw decades earlier. The environment it inhabited was incredibly hostile. The satellite endured an endless cycle of extreme temperatures, baking in the direct, unfiltered glare of the sun, plunging into the profound cold of Earth's shadow. It was bombarded by cosmic rays and high-energy particles. Unlike modern satellites, LS-1 lacked radiation-hardened shielding, 
Its 1960s-era transistors and circuits were vulnerable, and by all rights its systems should have been fried into oblivion. As the decades passed, orbit became increasingly crowded. Thousands of new satellites were launched for communication, for science, for espionage. With them came more debris, spent rocket stages, discarded equipment, shrapnel from accidental collisions. LES-1 was one piece of a growing orbital junkyard. It posed a small but real threat, a potential projectile that could collide with an active satellite, creating a cascade of even more debris. But it was just one among many, its story forgotten by all but a few. The Cold War ended, the Internet was born, and global communication became instantaneous, built on the very principles that LES-1 was meant to test. No one expected to hear from it ever again. It was a closed chapter, impossible to wake. The long silence of LES-1 seemed as permanent and as final as the stars themselves. Then, in 2012, something extraordinary happened. An amateur radio astronomer in Cornwall was scanning the skies. His name was Phil Williams, a passionate hobbyist, a keen ear, a deep curiosity about the cosmos. While listening to the radio spectrum, he detected a strange and faint signal. A weak, ghostly whistle, a pure tone that appeared and faded. It returned again and again with a precise, unvarying rhythm. The pattern pulsed on, then silence, repeating every four seconds. Not a natural sound. Artificial. Phil Williams was intrigued, not the signature of any known active satellite. He recorded the sound and began the detective work using orbital mechanics and frequency knowledge. He suspected a long-lost satellite, a zombie spacecraft. His investigation pointed to LES-1. He shared recordings with the global community amateur satellite trackers, ham radio operators. Others listened, pointed antennas skyward. From different countries they heard the same faint four-second loop as LES-1 passed. Evidence mounted, LES-1 had woken from a 50-year slumber. The question that baffled everyone was simple. Why? Why would a satellite that had been silent for nearly half a century suddenly start transmitting again? The answer, scientists believe, lies in a combination of decay, the satellite's unique physical state. The primary explanation centers on the satellite's power system, the satellite's uncontrolled tumbling motion. Over the decades, the onboard batteries that once stored power from the solar panels had completely failed. They likely degraded, with their internal chemistry breaking down, creating shorts in the satellite's electrical system. This failure, paradoxically, became the key to its revival. Instead of the power from the solar panels flowing to the dead batteries, the short circuit created a new, direct path. Now, any electricity generated by the panels could bypass the storage system and flow straight to some of the original transmitter components. However, this power source is not constant. LES-1 is not stable. It is tumbling end over end as it orbits the Earth. Lincoln Laboratory's analysis of the signal's fluctuations revealed the satellite is rotating at a rate of about six revolutions per minute. This tumbling motion means its solar panels are not always pointing at the sun. They move in and out of shadow, blocked by the satellite's own body. This is what creates the distinctive four-second pulse. As LES-1 tumbles, a specific set of solar panels is illuminated by the sun for a brief moment. In that instant, they generate a burst of voltage. This spike of electricity is just enough, and lasts just long enough, to power up the 237 megahertz transmitter. The transmitter keys on, sending out a simple, unmodulated carrier tone, the whistle that Phil Williams first heard. Then, shadow returns. The power is cut. The signal stops. Four seconds later, the cycle repeats. The signal itself carries no data. It is not the intelligent communication the satellite was designed for. It is simply the last gasp of a dying machine, an accidental beacon powered by sunlight and decay. The unexpected revival of LES-1 offers us a profound lesson in durability. 
This satellite was designed and built in an era of slide rules, nascent computing. It had a planned operational lifespan of only a few years. Yet parts of its core electronics have survived in one of the most hostile environments imaginable for over six decades. This longevity is astonishing. It speaks volumes about early space age engineering. The components were sealed in a vacuum, protecting them from oxidation and corrosion. The cold of space may have helped preserve them. However, the survival of LES-1's transmitter is also a bit of a miracle. The satellite was not shielded from radiation like modern spacecraft. It has been continuously bathed in high-energy particles from the sun and from deep space, which should have destroyed its delicate transistors long ago. The constant cycling between extreme heat in direct sunlight and deep cold in shadow should have caused microscopic cracks and failures in solder joints and wiring. Yet any functioning circuitry, even the accidental pulsed signal we observe today, is a powerful testament to robust construction. The story of LES-1 is not entirely unique. Other vintage satellites have shown similar zombie behavior. For instance, the United Kingdom's Prospero satellite, launched in 1971, officially deactivated in 1996. Heard transmitting its beacon in the 2000s, long after it was thought silent. These rare events provide invaluable data for engineers today. They act as long-term, unintended experiments on aging materials and electronics in orbit. By studying these zombie satellites, we can learn how to build more resilient spacecraft for the Moon, Mars, and the outer solar system. This durability is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it is a celebration of human ingenuity. We built something that lasted far longer than we imagined. It gives us confidence that probes like Voyager might function for decades to come. On the other hand, it highlights a growing problem. If a satellite's transmitter can switch on after 50 years, it can interfere with modern frequencies, an unpredictable source of radio pollution in orbit. While the story of Elise One's revival is a source of wonder, it also serves as a stark and urgent reminder of a serious and growing problem, space debris. The space around our planet is not the pristine, empty void it once was. It is a junkyard. Decades of space activity have left a cloud of junk in orbit. Entire defunct satellites, spent rocket boosters, tiny fragments of metal, paint flecks. According to the latest counts, there are tens of thousands of objects larger than 10 centimeters being tracked, and likely millions of smaller, untraceable pieces. LES-1 is one of these objects, a piece of space junk that just happens to have a voice. This debris poses a significant threat to our active space infrastructure. In orbit, even a tiny object can have devastating consequences. Objects in low Earth orbit travel up to 28,000 kilometers per hour, or about 17,500 miles per hour. At that velocity, a collision with a piece of debris the size of a marble can release the energy of a hand grenade capable of disabling or destroying a multi-million dollar satellite. A collision with a larger object, like the 68-kilogram LES-1, would be catastrophic, creating a cloud of thousands of new pieces and setting off Kessler syndrome. The fact that LES-1 is still transmitting is in a small way helpful. Ground stations can use its ghostly whistle to pinpoint its location and help operators steer clear. However, LES-1 cannot be controlled. It is a tumbling, unpredictable hazard. It will remain in orbit for centuries, a silent threat that occasionally whispers a warning. In the end, the story of LES-1 is more than just a curious anecdote. It weaves together the past, the present, and the future of our journey into space. This zombie satellite, with its haunting four-second call, links us to the pioneers of the 1960s. A simple mistake derailed a grand ambition, yet the spirit of that ambition endures in unexpected ways. Its surviving electronics are a quiet tribute to the engineers who built it. Its rediscovery is a shining example of citizen science. Phil Williams, an amateur, brought this ghost back into the light. 
Discovery isn't only for large institutions. The ghostly whistle of LES-1 is a powerful symbol. It humanizes the abstract problem of space debris, turning statistics into a tangible story with a voice. Hear that faint, looping sound? You're hearing the orbital junkyard, a poetic, unsettling reminder. Our actions in space have long-lasting consequences. Every satellite we launch will one day become debris. LES-1 forces us to confront that reality. Its signal is a call to action, urging us to be better stewards of orbit. Design satellites for responsible end-of-life disposal and invest in technologies to clean up our legacy. We stand on the cusp of a new era, returning to the moon and venturing to Mars. The lessons from this old satellite are more relevant than ever. Build things that last and plan for their entire life cycle. Less One encourages us to remain curious, to listen to unexpected signals, and to appreciate the dance between human ingenuity and physics. It connects the ham radio operator in their backyard to the advanced research laboratory, showing science is open to anyone who looks up and listens. If this story intrigued you, tap like and subscribe for daily space and tech stories. Thanks for watching.